Hey friends, welcome to this brand new part, part 36. So you can click the join button to become a member and a cloud kernel, which member? Cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member. So cloud kernel is for basic and intermediate certifications and cloud ninja is for advanced certifications. If you haven't got an opportunity to subscribe, hit the subscribe button and become a member. There are loads of advantages. This channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications, majorly GCP, AWS, and Azure. Let us jump into the questions. So there is a database. This database is an Aurora database. You see this Aurora. Aurora database, it is designed for unparalleled high performance. Okay, and it supports MySQL and Postgres. The problem is when large reports run, the application performs poorly. So what has been done is they reviewed the metrics in CloudWatch and they found that the read IOPS and the CPU utilization metrics are spiking when the monthly report runs. We want a cost effective solution. So it's like the this database has a lot of read and write requests, but once a month they would want to run reports and which kind of puts a pressure on CPU and your IOPS. So what, whenever you get such questions, always remember friends, apply the thumb rule. What is the thumb rule? The thumb rule is isolate, isolate, isolate the reporting application from the core application. That means how would you isolate? You would create a read replica or an Aurora replica from where the reports can run so that they will not distort the performance of the actual application that is using Aurora database. Let the monthly report use a clone or a replica and put all the loads there so that, you know, these two would be an isolated process. So if you see here, all the application will be using this database and the reports would be making use of this replica. Okay. So this would be my answer, my friend. I think this suffices the need. But let us look at other options. So it's like option A says you will make use of Redshift instead of Aurora. So Redshift, you know what? Redshift is not a database for global e commerce. Just to fire reports, you would move to S3. Or they are saying that we will use just the monthly reporting to Redshift. This is also an isolation, but Redshift is not cost effective. We also have to ensure that our solution is cost effective. Redshift is like a BMW. So when you can do the things with Honda, why would you, or a Honda Civic, why would you buy a BMW or Mercedes? Option C says you migrate the database to the larger instance class. Migrating to the larger instance class may not help. Okay, the reason for that is you do not know like how large. You may move one step up, increase the size, and you would see, hey, you know what? The reportings, the reporting application is still having performance glitches. So you don't know like how higher you want to go 2x 3x 5x 10x you don't know that so the better thing to do is isolate isolate my friend the reason i'm saying is the data would grow exponentially so today you might think a hey, 3x giving me a good performance but like six months down the line your exponential data increase may cause this to be a bottleneck again okay so this is wrong and d says you increase the provision IOPS on our instance just because you're getting a read IOPS issue. You increase the IOPS. Uh, this this would be a pretty temporary and a shallow approach. Okay, so you're addressing one need, but who will address the CPU needs, man? So effectively, this would be my final answer. Okay, so we move to the next question, man. So what is the story? The guy has on-prem monolithic application, like this guy has uh, Premier Padmani. Okay, okay, and they got to move to AWS. That means this guy is straight away 
switching from Premier Padmani to BMW. So they have a lot of front end and the back end code and they do not want to lose that. They want to retain it as far as possible. But they want to break the application into smaller applications. You know why? Why they want to break it? Because that will make it more modularized. When you create modules, small modules, it is easy to maintain, it is easy to execute, and you can do parallelism. You can run various small components in parallel to ensure that it runs faster within the window time window so the team wants a highly scalable solution to minimize the operational workload what meets the requirement here you know what such applications they are a good fit for amazon ecs you can package the application into containers and plug it into a highly secure reliable and scalable container this will manage that it is a service using which you can manage your containers it is serverless using Fargate. And then you can set up ALB with ECS as a target. You, you know, ALBs, like you have, suppose, a load balancer here. So usually you have EC2 instances. And for the ALB, the EC2 instances are the targets. Here we are saying, hey man, don't use EC2, use ECS as targets, man because you have container services so this looks correct but let us look at other options now option c is very similar to option d the difference is they are making use of ec2 instances they would plug albs with ec2 in an auto scaling group as targets will it work it can work it would work it will work but not with uh cost from a cost perspective it will be expensive but here it will not minimize the operational over overhead ecs is a managed service a lot of stuff infrastructure provisioning etc it's done on the fly by aws but if you go with ec2 man you have to do it so suppose you have a girl and two guys proposing one guy has a lot of stuff uh, like a chef a driver and the other guy doesn't have uh, she has to do all on her own on her ho uh, own whom she will choose she will not choose the one who doesn't have the stuff right so she will always use someone uh, who has managed service okay so c falls flat in this regard option b it tells you to make use of amplify what is amplify man have you heard about amplify if you want to build full stack web and mobile app then we use amplify here are we talking about full stack no we are not talking about full stack we are just saying man i have a big piece of code i want to cut that into smaller pieces and i want to make this application highly scalable if that is the ask i would not go for a ferrari man i can just settle for mercedes i would not go for like a half a million dollar or one million dollar ferrari option a says you know let's use lambda so what will happen with lambda lambda i just i like i explained it has a problem like what is the problem it has a problem of premature ejaculation that means it would only last for 15 minutes after 15 minutes it would die no matter what it would die whether it completed the processing or it did not complete it would die so we are not sure this can fit in fully here okay plus lambda becomes uh, a bit high from our operational overhead perspective and uh, it is scalable you, you will have to configure it to be scalable but from a operational overhead perspective it's a bit on higher side compared to ecs plus it cannot do that job fully you have to run the, the jobs end to end the application should run end to end and then the customer would be satisfied lambda cannot satisfy the customer but ecs can i hope you got what i mean and hence option d would be the right choice
Hey, let's move to the next question. So there are a lot of crap happening here. Okay. Keywords. The moment, the moment, the moment I see UDP, I always think about NLPs. UDP means NLBs, Network Load Balancers. So thus we have eliminated options A and option D. Fantastic. Okay, now if I see option B, the problem that I see inherently, it's so obvious. Lambda in an auto scaling. I have not seen an auto scaling group for Lambda. I have seen auto scaling group for EC2 instances. So I am striking this out. So my friend, for me, C is correct. Let me justify that. First of all, whatever requirements they have explained here, highly available architecture and company needs front and tire to provide best possible user experience. Everything is possible through global accelerator. So it helps with application availability performance in a global network. Plus it has NLB, which is perfect. Now it says use EC2 instances in an auto scaling group. Perfect because that provides you uh, low latency, right? You, you will have so, so many instances trying to process whatever is required at a faster rate. And auto scaling will ensure that the scale up occurs whenever required. So you see this question, this question is not about cost. This question is about performance. So this would be my answer. So in the certification exam, try to understand like most of the questions they will have is about cost optimization but there would be very few where like such questions where they are looking for highest performance top notch performance lowest latency then you should be very cautious you should not give a cost effective solution there you should give a high performance solution there hey buddy if you have not yet subscribed i don't know when will you subscribe but you know do the certifications cloud certifications if you are in the it technology you will gain respect man it's not about salary it's about respect it is about skill building and if you are trying to save those like five dollars or ten dollars forget that man subscribe become a member not even subscription just will help become a member Cloud Kernel or Cloud Ninja, invest some time in some solid content which will help you clear certifications, understand the concepts. See you in the next part. There will be many more parts that will get posted after this. Around two to three parts will be purely for the members.